Hi guys, Shere here. Death is a very common concept in Israel, unfortunately. Sometimes it feels like untimely deaths happen a lot more often here than they do anywhere else in the world. You'd be hard pressed to find an Israeli who doesn't know someone personally who was killed in the army or died in any other unplanned tragic way. Uh, every year there's a few deaths um, in Israel that gain a lot of popularity in the news, be it a crazy terror attack, suicide bombing, the 64 soldiers who were killed in last year's Operation Protective Edge, um, or Ayal Yilad and Naftali, who were kidnapped and murdered by terrorists last summer. This year, so far, I think that one of the deaths that gained the most international publicity is the murder of 16-year-old Shira Banki. For people who don't read the news, Shira Banki was marching in the annual Jerusalem Gay Pride Parade when she and five other people were stabbed. They were stabbed by a man who had just been released from 10 years in prison after committing a similar crime in the gay pride parade of 2005, where he stabbed and wounded three people. So I know it's a little bit in delay. This event happened already almost two weeks ago on July 30th. It just took me some time to gather my thoughts to come to realize why this death, this murder, and how it was publicized hit me quite hard. So you know how it's only ever the good people who die young. Shira Bunky is no exception based on the various blog posts written by her friends and interviews with her family. I know that Shira Bunky was a strong believer in tolerance and equality and love and acceptance. She was just a good person who joined in the march this year to express her belief that everyone has a right to live as they please. She was only 16 years old, a high schooler, yet she was brave enough to publicly express her support for equal rights, standing alongside a society of people who could really do with some more advocates in this country. Jerusalem is considered one of the holiest cities in the world by all three major religions. So because of this conservative nature, there is a high risk of violent demonstrations against the marchers. So it's not surprising that security is quite tight around the event, like it is around basically every other event where they expect thousands of people to attend. And yet somehow, somehow the, the attacker managed to get through with a knife. This is an attacker who had a history of homophobic violence who should have been profiled by the police. This is like, this I think is one of the worst parts in this series of events. How our government and judicial system failed this man, failed Shira. Clearly, Yishai Shtisel was mentally unstable. Who gets imprisoned for a crime only to go about and do it again the second he's released? He claimed he was on a mission from God to stop the abominations in the holy city. He refused legal advocacy because he doesn't recognize, he doesn't believe in the judicial court. Can anyone here spell schizophrenia? A dangerous person like this should have been institutionalized from the get-go. He should have been evaluated and re-evaluated by a team of psychiatrists before being allowed to roam free in public. He proved 10 years ago that he was a danger to society, so why were they so light on him? Why was his sentence cut short from 12 years down to 10? coincidentally releasing him right before the parade. Why didn't anyone stop him before it happened? He actually distributed a violent homophobic letter in his hometown, kind of hinting towards his plans for this year's parade. Why were his whereabouts and actions not monitored by the police? You would expect that after somebody is in prison for 10 years for attempted murder. By releasing him as a free man, they took a risk. And unfortunately, poor Shira and the five other victims paid the price. And yes, if you've read the reports, there's one detail that was emphasized many times that the murderer, Aisha Shlissel, is Haredi. At least that's how he identifies himself. I wonder if this fact is part of the reason why the story gained so much international publicity. Obviously, the story gives a terrible name to Haredi, to the ultra orthodox sect of Judaism. Newspapers will do whatever they can to give them a bad name. Of course, don't get me wrong, Haredi are anti-gay and homophobic. This is just part of their belief system. Like, I've read the article published on the Yeshiva World News website. This is a website that has judgmental clarity leanings in each of its poorly written articles, where in the headline of this story, they refer to the march as the abomination parade. I've read the comment section of said article where too many people are supportive of what Schlissel did, labeling him as a modern Pinchas. Pinchas Phineas is a biblical figure who stabbed an Israelite man and a midnight woman who were sexually involved. And this was believed to have ended a plague that God brought as a punishment for improper sexual relations. It's hurtful to read articles in international newspapers where journalists point figures at Tcharedim and say, look at those intolerant Jews, look at the, how they're erased. If they would stab one of their own people for holding different beliefs, they're so intolerant, they're so homophobic, 
they're stuck in their 10th century belief system. But I just want to yell at them and say, no, it's not everyone. That's, that's not us. As much as the ultra-Orthodox sect of Judaism stands out in the world's eyes as being the majority, that they're opposed to women's rights and gay rights and everything in between, it's really only the fanatics that would actually go out and would stab people at a parade. Um, rabbi Arya Stern, who's the chief rabbi of Jerusalem, coincidentally also a Haredi man, actually went to go to visit the victims of the uh, attacks at the hospital and told their families that he's praying for their recovery. I've spoken to Haredi friends who, yes, are opposed to gay rights and same-sex marriage, etc., but they're actually horrified by this chil of Hashem, this desecration of God's name, the very worst sin possible that this man committed. The finger pointing that I think is missing from all these articles is the one that should be directed at the Israeli court system. The stupid, blind court system that was incapable of identifying a man with severe mental illness. A government and security system that was incapable of protecting its citizens from a deranged lunatic with a knife. Thanks again for watching! You can click here to watch my previous vlog, probably one of my best, so you might not want to miss out. Click on the squares below to either watch all my vlogs, check out my channel page, or subscribe to my channel to be the first to find out when I upload something new. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.